Uh, now then, all morning, we've been discussing the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's interview with Oprah, broadcast in America last night, and you can watch it here in the UK on ITV tonight at nine. Well, we've heard lots of opinions this morning, but now we'd like to hear what you think, and our Royal Editor, Camilla Tomini, is with us as well. So let's go straight to the phone lines, and let's speak to Jenny first of all. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. Good morning. morning. So what's your take on this, then? Well, I would like to say um, I support 100% Harry and Meghan. Um, I think that the British press, tabloid press, has treated Meghan in particular absolutely terribly. And I do believe it's racist. Um, I also am really surprised, as a parent, how um, Charles has behaved um, to his son. I think, as a parent, your first and main priority um, is the well-being of your children, whether they're young or whether they're grown adults. And from what uh, Harry has said, um, Charles has not been there, which um, I think is like history repeating itself. And it's like basically um, confirming what Diane has said, that effectively she was left alone just to twist in the wind. It's, um, um, Camilla, Camilla's here now. Yeah. But, that, but that they have been close, father and two sons. Um, yes. and, and, uh, I'm assuming that those, those pictures are all genuine and real. It's always been a tricky relationship because obviously they attribute so much of the great stories of their upbringing to their mother and he's often been in the shadows, even though he obviously did help them in the aftermath of Diana's death. Um, equally, you know, you have to consider Prince Charles' own upbringing and his own behaviour towards his sons and the institution into which they are all born mm -hmm. and how that might make things difficult. I think my experience of Prince Charles is perhaps, if one was going to be negative, that he's a bit of a weak character at times and perhaps could have taken charge of this situation. Maybe that's a, a valid criticism. Could he, as the father here, have brokered a repairing of this relationship that has been at the heart of this problem between the royal brothers? Do they listen to him? I'm not sure. Is he inherently a kind-hearted man? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Would he be devastated by this interview? Yeah. Of course he will, like any dad. It's hard, isn't it? Because, because Jenny, I think what we've got to be careful of doing here is in the same way that there was a lot of speculation about Meghan and what was going on in her life, we don't want to sort of do the same thing to Charles because although Harry has said this in this interview, we don't know the details of what's going on there. And I think no. it, we can't... I don't want to be guilty of doing to Charles what others have done to Meghan, you we know? We must bear in mind throughout this whole experience that there are always two sides to every story. We must bear that in mind. And people's perceptions of one incident can be vastly different. Somebody can take great offence by somebody's behaviour and that person could have thought that they weren't doing anything wrong, OK? We've heard their narrative. We have not heard the rebuttal or the other side of this. I think that's worth mm. remembering. But we can also not be shy of the idea that there is a perhaps inherent dysfunctionality between having a family that is also your business and your work. Th those blurred lines have historically always proved problematic for the Windsors, haven't they? Um, yeah. We've got uh, Emma on the phone now. This is... Uh, we were talking about this in the break, actually. We'll tell you what we were saying a moment ago. Um, hi, Emma. Hi, hello. Hi, hi there. Hi, so hi, what, what would you like to say? Um, so I've always been a royalist. Um, I accept and understand the principle of, you know, the royals um, in our society. But unfortunately, this, this interview has made me question that, um, especially when it comes to racism and whether, you know, I will continue to be a royalist. The, the issue here is that, and this is what we were talking about before, is you wonder whether there were any parts of the interview where Harry thinks... Oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. Because if you tell that story, which is compelling, and as we've said, it's one of the grenades contained within that two-hour documentary, if you tell that story and don't say who it was, mm. then you could, and there'll be a you know, sort of firefighting going on o over this one, you could make it appear as Emma thinks. Hold on a second. Is the royal family yeah. racist? And that tars everyone with the same brush. Exactly. And also, is Prince Harry happy with the idea that viewers at home are thinking, oh, I wonder if it's his dad or his brother or his grandfather? Is that a good thing for anyone to be thinking if it doesn't apply to those individual people? Moreover, and, like, I can understand what Emma's saying, and maybe, maybe people do think like this, the royal family and the royals within it are not perfect. No-one's perfect. Mm. Nobody here is, OK? 
what we're talking about here is mistakes having been made that are then played out in the media spotlight. Obviously, I'm part of that because I report on this stuff because actually people are interested in it. That means that, of course, they are under such greater scrutiny than anyone else that any mistakes they do make are instantly magnified. Whereas I think everybody here and everyone watching this at home can appreciate that family dynamics can be mm -hmm. extremely complicated, very difficult. We also know what happens sometimes when someone marries in and that causes tension between sisters-in-laws and brothers-in-laws and all the rest of it. So I also think we should make the point that, you know, let's not cloud, let an Oprah interview cloud our judgment of this entire family and institution, which does try, and I do, I am a cynic, as you both know, being a journalist, but I do think that the people at the heart of this institution, the Queen and others, do inherently want to do good. Mm. They do want mm. to do things for charity. There is an undeniable streak of public service running through the Queen's Without veins. Doubt. Prince Philip, mm. Prince Harry, when he was in the army, of course, William and Kate. Well, one of the Queen's greatest achievements, she says, is the, is the Commonwealth. Yes. And holding the Commonwealth she together. She loves the Commonwealth. The multitude of, yep. of, of countries and cultures around well, the world. Well, she's the most well-travelled monarch in history, like the most well-travelled person in history, I think. I mean, how many countries and visits has she made over the course of her 68-year reign? And very much wanted to promote that into the 21st century and, mm. and make sure that the Commonwealth remains relevant. Equally, there's a lot of talk about the palace, the firm, the institution, like it is all men in grey suits. No, it isn't. There are a lot of men in the palace. There are a lot of women. There are some people of colour in the palace. There are some people of, you know, different sexual orientation. It's not some, you know, sort of lots of pale, stale and male men mm. taking decisions. I mean, there are those characteristics, but I think... We need to be real about the diversity of things behind palace gates as well before anyone starts jumping to conclusions that, you know, there is literally, pardon the pun, a whitewash going on. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, in response to Emma's concerns here and if other readers, uh, the viewers share them, then obviously that's why we want to hear from the palace to see what they're going to say about all this. Emma, will you be watching the interview tonight? Definitely, definitely. I want to know exactly, you know, what was said and, you know, how form an opinion of that, definitely. All right. Thank you for calling. Um, Thank Sarah, you. Bye. Sarah got in contact. She said it saddened me to see the pain that Harry and Meghan are suffering a resu result of unsolved problem of racism in the country. The abuse you received from the press would leave any human being questioning the logic of hanging around in such a country. Why can't we just be kind? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm here, aren't I, as a journalist, and therefore I have to take on all of the criticism of all the press. And one does try and be responsible in what you write, and you ha try and get it right, OK? You try and... All journalists really want to get the places, truth, it really. has been wrong. Yeah, I think some of the coverage, but, you know, this catch-all of the British press. What do you mean the Royal Press Pack? People like me who have gone on tours and promoted these people's charitable endeavours and championed Invictus Games and championed Heads Together and also written kind of informed commentary on the dynamics in the family or are you talking about people online who write about avocados i mean however however yeah the things. online brigade is an they entirely are different, different there but yeah. um yeah. you said to to us earlier on yes but when such and such joined the royal family that this was yeah. said which was nasty and then this was said that was nasty and don't forget countess of wessex and that was said that was nasty you still do it yeah, what well, you say you to be fair i haven't ever dressed up as a fake shake and tried to do a tabloid sting on this countess are of you wessex sure? or the duchess of york <laughs> All right, I do, I mean, I can only speak in life, you can only speak for your own behaviour and your own reportage. Yes, is there a tabloidisation of the royals? But this also kind of contradicts the narrative here because at the end of the day, none of the royals are, you know, they're, they're talking about being singled out in a vendetta and actually the royals have been heavily, heavily criticised and scrutinised for years. Sometimes rightly, sometimes they've made mistakes. We know that, we've reported on it, you know, Accuracy of reporting, as far as, in my mind, actual bona fide royal correspondents who mm. are well informed and resourced have kind of called this right. However, the couple, the couple left the family and we warned about that. The good, the good news there, that right at the very end, they're sure. very happy. It's like Prince and Princess, you know, in, 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 fairy, in the fairy tale yeah. land. It's gorgeous. They've got their chickens and they've got, you know, that's all gorgeous. They're having a girl, which is lovely. Yeah. That's the good news. Does good news actually sell? When, when um, Sarah says, be kind, does be kind sell papers? Well, yeah, because we have often done quite positive stories. You know, you look at pictures of them on their wedding day. I mean, I was in Windsor. Everyone was loving that wedding day, even though secretly it took place three days earlier. I know. We were literally... I mean, when I, I don't forget I broke the story of their relationship. 
we were rubbing our hands together with glee. We were like, who is this girl? Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Look at what she looks like. Harry's punching above his weight. You see the reception from the public when they did their first UK tour. You talk about them talk, talking about the adulation they had in Australia and subsequently. I think there was a huge amount of goodwill not just from the press initially, but the public behind him because he was so popular and behind this dynamic new woman that could say something mm -hmm. for herself and be a princess who wanted to be heard as well as seen. Mm. Brilliant, refreshing. But in the course of that time and post-wedding, you know, briefings were coming out that were quite negative about them. Unfortunately, you can't have all of the good publicity and none of the bad. If tabloids have gone too far, that's one thing, but it surely is right to try and get to the truth of their behaviour. Okay. Camilla, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Well, you. we're still waiting to see whether Oprah did say at the end of that documentary that uh, at midday other stuff that's was going to drop. So Ooh. just stay there. Just can we keep you here? Be on alert. Just stay here. Yeah. We wait with bated breath. Just in case. <laughs>